a given quadratic could have zero or one root or two roots, right? Um, not quite. Yeah, not quite. The discriminant says you can have zero or one or two real roots. But when you're talking about roots in general, of, of any nature, a quadratic has to have two. It must have two. Okay? They might be complex, which we don't have to really worry about yet, but they're there. Okay? They exist. Um, they could be equal, but there's still two of them. Or they could be distinct and real, which is what we're normally used to dealing with. Okay? So I'm going to call them alpha and beta. They have to be two. Okay? All right. Now, uh, how do I get the relationship between this, the roots, and uh, these coefficients here, a, b, and c. Okay. Well, um, if this quadratic has roots of alpha and beta, okay, uh, we often, when you get a quadratic, right, we know three ways of finding what the roots are. What are the, what are the three methods? Number one, you can factorize. Number two, formula. Number three, complete the square. Good. Okay. Now. Um, when you think about this first one here, right, factorization, we, we prefer this one because it's the fastest, right, and it's the most obvious, okay? So if I were to factorize something and it had roots alpha and beta, what would its factorization be? Um, x minus alpha is like the x minus beta. Good. x minus alpha, x minus beta, okay? That quadratic has roots at alpha and beta, okay? Now, I want this quadratic, right, to be equal to the one I started with, ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? I want to approach the same quadratic from two different angles, as it were, okay? This is from the general angle, right? And this is from the angle of what roots it has, okay? Now, I'm almost done here in terms of my setup, okay? But I'm not quite finished because at least how I look at it, um, this equation can almost never be true. Almost. This equation can only be true when a is equal to 1. Why? Yeah. If you find the coefficient of x, if you, if you open up the brackets, it's going to be x squared. Good, good, good. So, in case you didn't catch that, right? Um, if you have a look on the right hand side here, right? It's, it's like you've collected like terms and it's finished. All the like terms are gathered together. All of the x squared are here, all of the x's are here, and all the constants are here. Okay? Now, when you look at this, no matter how you expand it, no matter how you rearrange and do all kinds of weird stuff, right? You're never going to get an a out in front of your x squared, right? Because all of the x squares, well, there's only going to be one of them, right? Because they, they come from these two terms, okay? So this line only works in this case. So I want to fix that, right? So what I'm going to do is, if I want a lots of x squared, on both sides, I'm going to slap an A on the front. Okay? Are you content with that? Okay, <coughs> now, this is actually going to work. So let's expand this out and see what happens. What happens when you expand this? I'm going to have x squared uh, minus beta x minus alpha x plus alpha beta. Is that okay? Is that? That's ax squared plus bx plus c. So, let's see what i got here. This is a bit of a mess. So is this. What could I do here? Now, you've got two options, I think. You can expand that out with the a, right? Or you could take the a over the other side, okay? Now, I think either way would work, but I think if I take the a over this other side, the results we're after will be a little more obvious, okay? So, I'm going to divide everything by a. Is that all right? So, I've got this. And if I'm dividing everything by A over here, this becomes monic, this becomes B over A, uh, X, and this becomes C over A. <coughs> Divide every term, yeah? Okay, now, what's happening over here on the left-hand side? I want to rearrange it so it's more uh, similar to this side, okay? So my X squareds, they're fine, okay? So I'll just leave them alone. What have I got here? I've got a bit of a, a jumble, whereas over here I've got it all nice and neat. I've got all the X's together. Right? So I'm going to take all of these guys and I'll factor out the x. Okay? So I get x squared minus, okay, so what's the double negative? Okay. Um, there's my alpha beta 
Okay. Now, what does this mean? Okay. Because I've got all the x squareds here and here, right? All the x's here and here, and all the constants here and here, right? Um, they don't mix. It's a bit like um, like oil and water. Okay. Um, these parts aren't going to magically turn into a constant, and these parts aren't going to magically turn into an x or vice versa. Okay. So my next line would be by comparison of coefficients. You see that's what I'm doing here? I'm looking at each side and saying the coefficients should match up. I've got x squareds over here, they line up. I've got x's over here, they should line up too. Right? So minus alpha plus beta, that's the coefficient on the left hand side, should be equal to b on a. Or perhaps you're more familiar with looking at it without the negative sign on that side. There's the result. Okay? Uh, and in the same way, just looking at the end here, right? Alpha beta, the product of the roots, is C on A. Okay? Now I think that's probably the quickest way to um, derive these results. It's really simple algebra actually. Um, you, you could have probably used half as many lines as I did, but I just wanted to make it super, super obvious. Um, however, you might not like that way because it seems a bit, uh, it seems a bit black magic to me. Like, why did you do that? Why did I even start with this line? Okay, so uh, let me show you just quickly. Okay, just so you got more tools in your toolbox, and maybe you prefer this method rather than this one. If I'm after the sum and product of roots, okay, the more direct way to go after them. It's just to say, well, what are the roots are, and then add them up. That'll give you the sum. Right? And then say what the roots are and what's the product. Multiply them. Okay? And see what you get. Right? So if I've got alpha and beta, I actually know what their values are. Alpha would probably be equal to this. That's one of the roots, isn't it? What's the other one? It's just with, a, with an addition, right? Uh, it's the conjugate, if you like. Okay. Now, if this is one root and this is the other, uh, what is the sum? What's the sum? Uh, you're looking at it, at it first, and you think that's really gross, I look at all this business, but actually when you add them up, because of this negative and this positive, that's going to cancel, right? The disgusting part. So I'm going to get minus b, and minus b, that's the two parts that actually count, right? All over the same denominator. Yeah, minus 2b over 2a. Oh, that looks kind of familiar, right? I'm just adding up the roots. Uh, in the same way, if you multiply the roots, again, it looks as if it will be very bad, right? As if it will come out terrible numbers, terrible letters, sorry. But because they're conjugates, because they're conjugates, um, this is actually a factorization you learn all the way back in year eight. It might have even been year seven. There's one, there's the other. 2a times 2a. It's just a multiplying through, right? What's this thing on the top here called? What is that? This is the difference of two squares, right? Uh, I know it's confusing with the a's and b's, but this is a minus b and a plus b, right? So the result should be a squared minus b squared. Well, the first thing squared is b squared, right? And the second thing, because it's a square root, will just turn into that, right? You see that's just the square root's gone. 4 over 4a squared. Uh, are you seeing it? Um, b squareds cancel, okay? Um, negatives cancel. 4s cancel. a cancels with that a. Zero root. Okay? So, which one you prefer is up to you. I mean, it's kind of cool that doing it this way, both results just sort of fall out. Okay? But this one's sort of like, well, I want the sum, so I'll take the sum. I want the product, so I'll multiply them. Okay? So you take whichever one you want, that's fine.